Hey guys, welcome. I'm Keegan with Seared and Smoked, and today I'm excited because we're going to be smoking some nice St. Louis pork ribs on the Bronco Pro drum smoker. All right, before we throw these ribs on, let me tell you what I've done so far. We got our smoker set up for around 300 degrees, got lump charcoal in there. In the basket, always start with the large chunks, work your way up to the small chunks, and then I've been, uh, instead of putting wood on top, I've been putting little chunks of wood in amongst the charcoal. Little tip I picked up from Harry Sue and Justin over at Baby Back Maniac. Um, Harry has his own channel to check him out. They're both awesome. Um, so I've been going with that lately and that, that's worked out nicely. So it makes it just a little less maintenance during the cook. After we got our charcoal going in there, just dumped about a half a chimney of lit coals on top. And that's just a nice way to get a nice controlled burn versus like having a huge fire and trying to tame it down. So I do that whether you're working with a drum smoker or a green egg, any charcoal smoker, just put a little on top, open up your vents a little bit and just let it creep up. And that's a nice way to get a controlled setup. All right, and then these ribs, these are looking gorgeous. I got three racks from Costco and the three pack of the St. Louis ribs, and I've just trimmed them up so they're looking a little more pretty. Shortened them up just a little bit, just so they could fit on the, on the hanging style of the drum smoker here. Um, it's around 18 inches top to bottom, so you might have to trim your ribs up a little bit if you want them in one rack, or you can just cut them in half and use twice as many hooks, which is fine too. Uh, today's Ensemble video, I just want these to be the prettiest ribs you've ever seen. So I trimmed them up to be perfect and we got three racks of ribs to throw on the smoker. And as far as seasoning, we're just using one of my house blends that I use a lot, uh, tweaking slightly here and there. So I'll put the recipe I'm using today down in the show notes for video description. Uh, but I'm always tweaking things a little bit, but also a little bit the same. So check that out if you haven't tried any of those rubs. I think you'll really like this one. It's a good one. And we're just going to put these on right around 300 for about three and a half hours to start. And we'll kind of keep an eye on them, make sure they're not getting too crispy, too hot. Adjust the temperature as needed. Every smoker is different. But we're shooting for a little faster cook, so plan on hanging these for around three and a half. And then probably switch them to the grill grate after that to finish them up. And we got a little mixture of apple juice and Coors Light, spritz the ribs for the second half of the cook. All right, before we seal this up for a couple hours, I just wanted to show you the setup in here. And you can see the heat deflector down in there. The ribs are a couple inches above that, so I could have left a little bit more meat on the bone if I wanted to. Um, but I'm comfortable with this setup. Let them hang for three and a half hours. Spritz after about two hours every 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, it's been about a little over two hours and it smells like grilled smoked meat heaven out here. The one thing about the drum smokers, they have like this kind of a grilled smoked uh, flavor smell to them. Like it's, it's different than like a green egg or like a uh, pellet smoker. This smells like it's like a rich grilled flavor. It smells like I'm grilling steaks out here while we're hanging these ribs and it smells amazing. Let's check them out. All right, so look at these ribs. It's been two hours. I've not touched them. You can see that they're kind of nice and glistening and they get a lot of steam coming off the uh, heat deflector down there. That's the great thing about the barrel smokers. They kind of steam themselves, kind of base themselves. So these look great. I'm not even going to spritz these. I'll keep an eye on them. Uh, as we approach kind of three, three and a half hours, uh, we'll think about pulling them and putting them on a grill grate to finish them just so they don't drop down into the uh, abyss below. All right. It's been about three hours and 20 minutes since we put these bad boys on and they're looking good. Got some pullback on the bone. Got that nice mahogany color, just that beautiful rub. So they've been on for, you know, close to three and a half hours at 300 degrees and you can leave them on longer like this hanging, but what I'm going to do is pull them make sure we don't have any disasters and just pop them back on the grate. And uh, after we pop them back on the grate, we can spritz them and let them finish before we pull them off the grill and test them out. All right, these ribs are looking good. Once again, the color is amazing. Uh, bend tests are starting to tear a little bit when you bend them, so they're pretty close. So we'll leave them on another 30 minutes, maybe an hour tops after we spritz them here. Do a good spritz, just to keep them a little on the cooler side. Then we're in the home stretch. Woo! 
All right, these are looking gorgeous. I just glazed them. I meant to catch that on camera, but we had a production issue, so uh, we missed that in action. But easy four ingredient, five ingredient glaze that I make. Uh, I'll put the recipe down below in the video description. And these are done. You can see that with the bend test, starting to get just like a little bit of cracking there. You know, if I let it go, it'd crack in half. So it's it's tender, it's done. They look gorgeous, nice, that nice deep, mahogany color on them and uh, looking forward to tasting these. Let's try them out. And before we move on, if you're not a subscriber to Seared and Smoked, I'd love to have you as part of the crew. We do a lot of fun stuff with grill reviews, grill table builds, recipes, all backyard barbecue stuff. This is your spot. So definitely love to have you as a subscriber. And if you want more Bronco Pro specific videos, I'll put a playlist up there in the corner that you can click on with more Bronco Pro videos from the past and in the future. All right, let's check out some of these ribs here. Make it easier on myself, flip it over. Not bad. Okay, so bark is nice. A little smoke ring on there, looking good. I could have pulled them off just a little sooner. They're nice and tender, but they could have been just a little more moist based on probably when I took them off. So next time, I'll take them off about three hours total or do them at a lower temperature. Okay, but now the important thing, how do they taste? Overall, I give myself about a seven out of 10 on these just based on, I should have cooked them just a little less, not quite as juicy as I would have wanted them to be, but that was my fault. So next time I'll just dial it back a little, but you can fit a ton of ribs on that smoker. And uh, I like the versatility as far as hanging versus on the rack to finish, however you want to do it. Um, but what's really cool about it is how you can hang them. They kind of self based by kind of steaming themselves as the juices drop, hit the, uh, the heat deflector, then heat the flames, you know, hit the flames below and shoot back up. And some of the pit barrel cooker, you get really good flavor off this. You can taste the charcoal, you can taste the smoke. Definitely a tasty rib. I'll be doing this again. If you want to see more Bronco Pro videos, I'll put the playlist up there in the corner or you can subscribe right there. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber at Syrian Smoked if you haven't already joined on. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We'll see you next time at Syrian Smoked. Food always tastes better outdoors.